Hi, everyone. This is Karen Campbell, Joslin Art Museum's Phil Wilson Curator of Contemporary Art. Since 2012, Joslin and Omaha Symphony have collaborated to present Symphony Joslin, a series of concerts and gallery talks pairing music and art. In lieu of this month's Symphony Joslin live performance and gallery talk, I'll be sharing with you a bit about American artist Frank Stella's painting, Nagaro, from 1982. And as you listen, I invite you to enjoy excerpts from Mozart's Symphony No. 36, titled Linz. Frank Stella began painting as a teenager while attending the prestigious Phillips Academy in suburban Boston, and apparently he was quite a precocious young artist. When one of his teachers instructed the class to paint a still life of an ivy plant, Stella was the only student to veer away from realism, and this makes sense. Later, he would claim, quote, I always wanted to make abstract paintings. I wanted my paintings to live in a world of their own. So Stella continued to pursue art while studying history at Princeton University from 1954 to 1958, and during that time, he visited New York City frequently. He met established artists and critics, and he found particular inspiration in the work of Jackson Pollock, whose status as one of the most influential figures in American painting continued even following his untimely death in 1956. So wishing to maintain his connection to the budding epicenter of mid-century painting, Stella moved to Manhattan after finishing his undergraduate degree, and he encountered for the first time the work of another young artist named Jasper Johns. In Johns' early canvases, Stella really saw the potential for a new visual language that called upon the gestural quality and prominent brushstrokes of the abstract expressionists, yet also allowed images to be taken at face value. Later, Stella would say of his own paintings, quote, what you see is what you see. And this became a very famous adage that inspired later generations of artists. Uh, Frank Stella is a fascinating character in the narrative of American art. He's a bit of a chameleon. Rather than taking direct cues from his peers, he's developed an individual style that's undergone several significant shifts over the course of his career. And this is a trajectory that the artist has described as a transition from minimalism to maximalism. Now, during this journey, working in series has been central to Stella's methodology. So during the 1950s and into the 60s, he created several bodies of work that feature complex variations on specific pictorial themes guided by compositional rules he had, he had established for himself. Uh, and these rules were grounded in basic geometric shapes and strong lines. Now, at the time, color was certainly secondary to pattern for Stella, uh, as exemplified by a series of four works he made between 1958 and 1960 called The Black Paintings. Stella created these meticulous canvases by hand, first using a pencil to sketch out his patterns, and then applying enamel paint using a house painter's brush. The resulting compositions, which are credited for laying the groundwork for minimalism, are subtle and they completely eliminate any allusion to depth of field. The black paintings led artist Carl Andre to reflect that, quote, Frank Stella is not interested in expression or sensitivity. He is interested in the necessities of painting. His stripes are the paths of brush on canvas. These paths lead only into painting. In the later 1960s, color becomes more central to Stella's approach, as you can see in this 1974 painting that's on long-term loan to Joslin from the Larson Collection. Concentric squares are a recurring motif in Stella's work in the late 1960s and 70s, and this color-saturated canvas is a rare example of side-by-side -side squares. So in the early 1970s, we see yet another major transition occur as Stella turns away from flat picture planes to begin experimenting with relief. His work becomes increasingly voluminous, growing away from the wall and into the viewer's physical space. And by the 1980s, Stella had almost totally abandoned the austere flatness of his earlier canvases. Works from this period feature bold, gestural, graffiti-like paint application that emphasizes the metal structures as forms floating in space. Nogaro is from Stella's Circuit Series, executed from 1980 to 1984, and this body of work includes 22 wall-mounted aluminum constructions, all of which are named for cities with well-known car racing tracks. These dynamic, curvilinear works reveal the loose uh, approach to form that Stella achieved later in his career, and I think they epitomize his deft handling of three-dimensional space. So as you can see here, all references to the traditional picture plane have been eliminated, and the wall really becomes the frame that contains Stella's painting. 
This direct engagement with site prefigures the artist's more recent forays into public art projects as well as architectural design. So this bold sculptural painting is a wonderful accompaniment to Mozart's Symphony No. 36, uh, which you've been hearing in the background. Written in 1783, this lively piece of music ebbs and flows with moments of great excitement, followed by slower and more even keel sections. And then there's this energetic rush to the end, uh, which reminds me of the final dramatic moments when race cars close in on a finish line. I want to thank you for joining me today. This is the final Symphony Jocelyn Gallery talk of the 2019-2020 season, but please keep checking back on Jocelyn's social pages for more great content coming soon.